Welcome to Divine Consultant, a place where we connect people, innovation and technology to create a successful result for our clients. My name is Lucky Igwe. We'll be looking at a select step of the NIST Risk Management Framework. The purpose of the select step is to select, tailor and document the controls necessary to protect the information system and organization. The goal is to understand how to select security controls meeting the security baseline commensurate with the system's high watermark. In my last video on categorize an information system, the BMS system, which was a dummy system and it's not a live system, um, the highest impact to the BMS system was determined as a moderate impact. And this was done by first identifying the information types, then determining the impact level to each of the security objectives. Then afterwards, the next step was to identify the highest impact to each of the security objectives. Thereby, we had confidentiality as moderate, integrity as moderate, availability as moderate. So the highest impact to the security objectives is moderate because moderate is the highest uh, impact to each of the security objectives. So BMS system was categorized as a moderate impact system. The BMS system was categorized as a moderate impact system. The next step would be to select the applicable security controls to secure the moderate impact system. In doing this, there are two publications that are used to select the applicable security controls to secure a low impact system, to secure a moderate impact system, and to secure a high impact system. These publications are the NIST 853 Ref 4 or the NIST 853 Ref 5. The NIST 853 Ref 5 was recently approved. Presently, most government agencies and organizations are still using the NIST 853 Ref 4 as a control baseline. This publication has the security and privacy control for federal information systems and organizations. It provides guidelines for selecting and identifying security and privacy controls for information systems. Before I take a step forward, I would like to quickly do a quick comparison between the NIST 853 Ref 4 and the NIST 853 Ref 5. I took a quick glance at the NIST 853 Ref 5 and I noticed two major things uh, that changed you know, on that publication. On NIST 853 Ref 4, the impact level control baseline, which is the low, moderate, and high, if you all remember the NIST 853 Ref 4 publication, you know, that control set where, you know, on that uh, table part that shows the low, moderate and high and, you know, they documented each of those controls um, uh, on that uh, publication. That section was not added or that part was not added on the 753 Ref 5. Also, the control families. Presently, the 753 Ref 4 has 18 control families and on the 753 Ref 5, the control families were increased to 20 control families. Two control families or two control family were added to the control baseline. And these are the PT control, which is the PII processing and transparency, and the SR control, which is the supply chain risk management. The second publication is the FIPS 200, which is the minimum security requirement for federal information and information systems. There are three classes of security controls. These are the management controls, the operational controls, and the technical controls. The management controls focus on the management of risk and information system security. The operational control are primarily implemented and executed by people. The technical control are implemented and executed by the information system through an automated means. These are the security control families. This table um, identifies uh, the control families and it maps the control family to the control class. 
It shows the identifier, the family, and the class. The AC control, which is access control, uh, is mapped to the technical control class. The AT control, which is the awareness and training, is mapped to the operational control class. The AU control, which is the audit and accountability, is mapped to the technical control class. The CA control, which is the security assessment and authorization, is mapped to the management control class. And I can go on and on and on. All these controls are controls that are used to secure an information system. This table shows the security control baseline. Um, our system was categorized as a moderate impact system. So you come to the state of the three ref four to select the applicable security control, the applicable moderate um, control set to secure the information system. Now on this table, uh, the control families, they are much more than this AC control. Um, I'm just using this table for the sake of this video. Uh, it goes through from AC to all through to AU, AT, SI, you know, CA controls and all that. But uh, for the sake of this video, I'm just using this table to pass up, to pass across my information. Um, now, this is the Nissan 53 Rev 4. You come to Nissan 53 Rev 4 using the, using this publication to select the applicable security controls. Now, on this column, we can see the moderate uh, control baseline. So you come to the Nissan 53 Rev 4 to select the applicable moderate control baseline to secure your information system now note that even though you select all the moderate control baseline for the ac control at control au control and all the eating control families you still have to do what is called a control tailoring control tailoring is a process of you um reducing the the, the control set or aligning the control set to fit the business mission, to fit the objective, the business mission or the purpose of that system. So you have to align the control set to actually fit the purpose or the mission of that information system. Now, if you come down to, if you look at the, the priority section, the priority section shows P1, P2, P3 and P0. Um, P1, what this part is actually talking about is that this part is actually showing, you know, which controls need to be implemented first. So, per the priority code, P1 controls has to be implemented before P2 controls. And P2 control has to be implemented before P3 controls. PO controls depicts or shows controls that are not selected. So, let's take for instance. P1 is AC8 and P2 is AC7. So meaning that AC8 control has to be implemented first before AC7 security controls. The following tasks are part of the select step of the NIST risk management framework. The first task is the control selection. On this task, you select the controls for the system and the environment of operation. The next task is the control tailoring. The control tailoring, you tailor the controls selected for the system and the environment of operation. This is the point where you, or this is the step or the task where you align the security controls, you know, to the business mission. The next task is the control allocation. You allocate the security and privacy control to the system and to the environment of operation. The next task is the documentation of plan control implementations. So this is the task or this is the step where you document the controls for the system and environment of operation in the security and privacy plans. That is in the system security plan, which is a PL2 control. The next task is continuous monitoring strategy, which is a CA7 control and the NIST publication that is used is NIST 800137. At uh, this task, you develop a continuous monitoring strategy to uh, ensure the effectiveness of the security controls.
The next tax is the plan review and approval. This is the tax or this is the step where the system owner reviews the system security plan, the ISSM, the CISO, and the AO. They all review the system security plan for approval. To know more about the NIST risk management framework and other services that we offer, visit our website at www.divineconsult.com or you can send us an email at info at divineconsult.com. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell so that you'll be the first to be notified when a new video is released. Thank you.